We have started the study abroad program strong. There was no time wasted getting into the studies portion of the program. We leaped right into Mallory's and Tennyson's versions of the King Arthur legacy. Today I will focus on Tennyson and his version of King Arthur. Alfred Lord Tennyson was born in 1809 in Somersby, Lincolnshire, and was a son of an Anglican clergyman. He began to write poetry in his teens, and by the time he was 41 years old, he became the poet of the British Empire. While he was an accomplished poet, I do believe that Tennyson's Idols of the King catapulted him to the world recognition that he has sustained over the years. What inspired him to write about King Arthur, his knights, and Excalibur? Well, after a trip to Lincoln, Lincoln Castle, and Lincoln Cathedral, there was no doubt in my mind that his upbringing and proximity to medieval history influenced his work. I imagine Tennyson walking up the steep hills of Lincoln, walking up the cobblestone streets as he looks around the marketplace and in the inhabitants of Lincoln. He looks up and sees a medieval home that has smoke coming out of a small pipe, most likely from the fireplace inside. He looks forward and sees the walls of the Lincoln Castle. He sees what was once an active fortress that had once housed nobility and protected them. If he was lucky like I was, he walked the castle walls, closed his eyes, and heard the steps of the knights that once walked this castle with their heavy armor. He looked over at the mott, the herringbone walls, and the inside of the observatory, which once was the main portion of the castle that housed nobility like King Stephen. From that observatory, he looks out and sees Lincoln Cathedral, which no doubt resonates with him as a son of a clergyman. He sees the enormous spires and the hand-painted stained glass that depicts the resurrection of Jesus Christ. After perhaps sharing the same moments that maybe Tennyson had also experienced while in Lincoln, I had some thoughts. Even in present-day war and literature, film, music, and art has been considered romantic in many ways. Men of war like knights, kings, soldiers, etc. have always been held in high regard. To give one's life to their country is seen as the most noble act a person of war can do. But war is bloody, dark, violent, and tumultuous. Yet Tennyson weaves the romanticism and violence of war so eloquently. During the passing of Arthur from Idols of the King, Tennyson wrote, And the splintering spear, the hard mail hewn, shield breakings and the clash of brands, the crash of battle axes on shattered helms and shrieks after the cries of those falling down looked up for heaven and only saw mist. You have men battling in war who are sword fighting to gruesome deaths. Their last view is of battle or the sky above. As Tennyson experienced the Lincoln Castle, is this what he imagined the battles fought outside the walls would have resembled? Did he take that moment and bring it to life via the passing of Arthur? I am forever grateful that I got to walk the same streets that Tennyson walked. I am equally grateful to go walk the very same castles that many kings walked through as well as light the candle in the cathedral these men prayed in. If this is only the beginning, I cannot imagine what is yet to come.